Hey guys, and welcome to this edition of Scruff's Garage. Uh, today's project is a little different. Uh, as you can see that I've got shoehorned into the garage here behind me. Uh, it's not the Corvette, it's my F-150. This is my daily driver, and it's also what I pull uh, the race car trailer with uh, when I take the Corvette to the track. Uh, so today's video is a little bit more just maintenance on the truck. <clears throat> uh, the truck's got about 135,000 miles on it, uh, and I need to change the transmission fluid. So the truck is a 2010 F-150, it's the last year, the 5.4 liter, and this one has the 6-speed, the 6R80 uh, transmission, automatic transmission. Uh, from Ford, they call it a lifetime fill on the transmission fluid, because uh, if you see behind me, I don't have the hood off. Uh, that's because there's no dipstick. Um, Ford doesn't want you checking the transmission fluid, and they don't want you changing the transmission fluid. <clears throat> However, I do tow with it, and my drive to and from work uh, is heavy stop and go traffic. Um, and at this point, I've developed a little bit of a, a shutter in the transmission at low RPMs uh, as you kind of ease into the throttle just a bit. Uh, so I'm going to see if changing the transmission fluid helps with that. Um, so with this, essentially, uh, we're going to drop the pan. All the fluid will come out. <clears throat> then I've got a new filter to go in it uh, and then new fluid. Um, with this, just a uh, drain and fill, essentially. Um, the whole system is about 13 quarts. Uh, we'll only be able to get maybe seven and a half quarts out. Uh, that's about what I've seen from other people. Uh, so I bought eight quarts of fluid. Uh, so if you wanted to get all of it, you'd have to do it a second time. So if you want to wait till your next oil change, uh, maybe kind of go through the process again. You wouldn't need to change the filter again, but you would still have to drop the pan uh, to get the fluid out because there's no drain plug in the pan. Because um, again, Ford said, well, hey, it's a lifetime fill. Um, why do you need a drain plug? And I did look into it. There are several companies that make aftermarket transmission pans. Um, they're more expensive than I was willing to, um, to spend money on um, in the $300 range. Uh, and there's a company that makes a um, aftermarket dipstick tube. Uh, so if you want to, you can actually fill through the dipstick tube. Um, and of course, you can check the transmission fluid level uh, with the dipstick as well. But that's like 200 bucks. So. I just didn't see the need to spend 500 bucks in extras, uh, and that doesn't include the, the fluid and filter change. So uh, that's what we're up against at the moment. Um, I'll spin the camera over and just show you what, what I bought. So this transmission uses the uh, Ford, the Motocraft, the Mercon LV, which is a low viscosity. Um, don't use any other type of uh, Mercon or another type of transmission fluid. This transmission takes specifically uh, the LV uh, version. Uh, like I said, I bought eight quarts, so hopefully that will um, do it for me. Like I said, everything I've seen, most guys get about seven and a half quarts out uh, when they do a, a pan drop. And then, of course, I also bought um, a, a new uh, transmission filter. Um, the one that's in there is probably still okay, um, but while I've got the pan down, uh, you know, I can't remember how much this was, maybe 30, 35 bucks, uh, you're not talking a lot of money. So um, if it's the first time you've done it, I'd recommend um, a new filter as well. Uh, from what I can tell in my service records from uh, the previous owner, the guy who owned the truck first, uh, I think he had the transmission fluid changed at the dealership. Um, somewhere around maybe 35,000 miles and like I said I've got a hundred and thirty five on it now uh, so the fluid that's going to be coming out should be about a hundred thousand miles on it so we'll see how it looks uh, see if it looks burned or uh, I expect it to be pretty dark but um, we'll see so anyway we'll dump, jump into the uh, the service and uh, I'll show you what I'm doing okay uh, we're down under the truck now uh, one thing to point out make sure the truck is uh, nice and cool. Uh, these are the catalytic converters on on either side. Uh, these get extremely hot, extremely fast. Um, I hadn't driven my truck in 24 hours, and I moved it, uh, just cranked it up and moved it into the garage. I mean, it ran for less than two minutes. Uh, these things are just radiating heat um, already, so I'm going to let it cool for a second. Um, <clears throat> but once we get started, we'll need to break the seal on the transmission. It's a uh, sealed transmission um, so there's a cap here this is on the uh, passenger side it's a 19 millimeter there's a, uh, a metal cap and then under this once we get this out um, 
there's a little tiny plastic uh, dipstick uh, in there, so just a short plastic piece. Uh, that's how you can make sure you've got the right amount of fluid. Um, so that's where we'll start. Uh, we'll get that out, and then we'll start taking out the um, transmission pan bolts, just little eight millimeters, um, and we'll work it around. What I'll do, I'll leave uh, a couple of the bolts still in the pan towards the back, um, and I'm going to let it, because obviously this thing is full of fluid, and we don't have an easy way of getting that out without dropping the pan first. Um, so we're going to let the pan just kind of angle down just a bit, and I've got a big uh, catch uh, basin down here below it, and of course I've got a bunch of cardboard uh, on either side of it as well, because this will make a mess. Um, and we'll let most of the fluid drain out, so we'll slowly begin working the um, the bolts back, and I'll keep two at the back, uh, kind of still in or just a little bit loose, uh, so that the pan will kind of crack and, and come down just a bit, uh, and we'll try to drain off some of the fluid that way first uh, before we pull the pan out um, all the way. Uh, that way we don't drop uh, seven or eight quarts of fluid all at once. Yeah, when you release that uh, cap, you'll hear the uh, the vacuum from the transmission, and then uh, it'll probably come out with the uh, dipstick. But this pulls out of there uh, like that. All right, I've drained as much as I can. Uh, so it's now down to the pan down. I've just got a couple of bolts holding it up. Let's see how big of a mess I can make. Okay, I got the uh, transmission pan out, as you can see. There's a magnet uh, here in the bottom. Uh, we'll pull this off the pan and clean it out. Uh, there will always be a little bit of uh, metallic sludge, uh, so to speak, uh, down there. This doesn't look too bad. Uh, a few pieces of maybe clutch fiber or something like that. Um, but nothing catastrophic, which is good. Uh, you can see the fluid, uh, pretty dark looking. But uh, I'll take this over to the solvent tank. Uh, I'll get it cleaned up. Um, the gasket, the gasket is reusable. Uh, you can see it's a metal gasket with a rubber uh, inner seal. Uh, so as long as you don't damage this, taking it out. Uh, the gasket is reusable. Uh, you can buy another one uh, if you want to, but not necessary. The pan's actually stamped uh, that the gasket's reusable. Uh, so we'll just wipe this down. Don't use any harsh chemicals on the uh, the gasket piece of it. And don't worry if you see any oxidation on the outer lip of the gasket. Uh, that's outside of the sealing area. Um, the seal would happen along uh, in here, inside the uh, the bolt holes. So uh, no worries there, uh, just as long as this rubber gasket uh, isn't damaged, um, it'll be okay. Okay, so we got the pan cleaned up, we got our gasket cleaned up, and we cleaned up the uh, magnet that goes in the pan, so we got that back in place. Uh, we've got the uh, new transmission filter, uh, and it's always a good idea 
I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not, but stamped on the old filter, it's the old part number, make sure that matches up to the part number stamped uh, on your new filter. Uh, you don't want any problems there. Um, obviously, if it's the wrong transmission filter, uh, it could sit at a different height. Uh, you may not pick up fluid the way you're supposed to, uh, and you could introduce a lot of problems. So, uh, From here, we'll go back under the truck. Uh, we'll get the pan uh, put back in place, and then we'll work on uh, putting fluid back in. Okay, be sure to wipe down the um, gasket surface here on the bottom of the transmission housing. Uh, then we're ready to install the uh, transmission filter, which just uh, kind of presses into place. See, it kind of snaps in. And then it just kind of hangs there, and then when the pan comes up, it'll help hold it in place. And of course, don't tighten the pan bolts yet. We're just getting them snug. I need something to hold the pan in place. Uh, we'll get all the bolts uh, in and just slightly snug. Uh, and then we'll go through our torque sequence, uh, starting from the middle and working our way out. Okay, so we've got all of our transmission pan uh, bolts in place and just slightly snugged up. Now we're going to torque them to spec. Um, torque spec is 98 uh, inch pounds. Uh, which is between eight and nine foot pounds. Uh, so they're small bolts. It doesn't take much. Uh, so don't overdo it. And then, like I said, we're going to start from the center, uh, then crisscross, working our, our way out, uh, a lot like you do, like an intake manifold or something like that. Okay. And here's how I'm going to pump the uh, new transmission fluid in. Uh, you can get one of these little hand pumps. They screw onto the top of a quart bottle. Uh, most of your automotive hardware stores, Vance Auto Parts, CarQuest, uh, that sort of thing would have these. Um, and like I said, just screws on. You can, you'll can you pump. And then, uh, of course, we'll run this line um, up to where that little dipstick tube um, we took out originally. Uh, so that's where we start filling from. Okay, so I just finished up the truck. <clears throat> uh, once you get the pan back on, obviously you get all the bolts torqued to spec, you're ready to fill uh, the transmission fluid. Um, I was able to pump in five quarts, and then the fluid started running out of the transmission case, uh, which surprised me. I didn't realize it was going to fill up uh, quite that quickly, because uh, everything I read said everybody puts about seven and a half quarts in when they do a, a pan drop, so it's like, man, it, it's mine overflowing at five quarts. Um, so what I decided to do, the, the proper way to check the transmission fluid level is with the truck running. And you'll see on that little tiny dipstick, uh, there's a series of hash marks. The, the bottom hash mark is for when the fluid is cold, and the top uh, is when the fluid is hot. Um, you'll figure out very quickly that checking that, um, the, the fluid level, you'll never be able to do it when it's hot. Because uh, that fill point is right beside the uh, catalytic converter. And if the truck's running for more than uh, a minute, two minutes, that catalytic converter gets extremely hot. Um, I put my little infrared gun on it after I went for a drive. Um, that thing can be north of five, six hundred degrees uh, pretty easily. So be really careful. You want a pair of uh, like mechanics uh, gloves, and even then, you have a limited window to to work. Um, so anyway, five quarts. I start the truck up, <clears throat> and I put the little dipstick tube in. Um, and the fluid doesn't even register on the tube. Uh, once you start the truck and that uh, transmission pump is running, um, it pumps fluid through the rest of the, the transmission up, obviously up into the, uh, the torque converter. Um, so it, it draws the fluid level down tremendously. Uh, so five quarts wasn't anywhere near enough. Um, at that point, I decided to go back and see how much fluid did I get out of the truck. Um, I was surprised to find it. I was very careful in how I measured the fluid that came out. Um, I only got <clears throat> a little less than six quarts out, about five and three quarters maybe. Um, the only thing I can guess is maybe the truck was a little low in transmission fluid when I started. <clears throat> um, and then think about it, what I should have done 
um, is with the truck running before I started any of it is check the transmission fluid level uh, so I'd recommend you do that that's kind of a, a lesson learned just so you know where your starting point is so if you get less than um, seven and a half quarts out um, you know did was I low on transmission fluid or have I put too much back in that sort of thing anyway um, so obviously five quarts wasn't enough uh, so I shut the truck off <clears throat> and was able to put uh, more fluid in I got about six and a half quarts in um, before the transmission the casing overflew um, again so I, I cranked up the truck I checked the fluid level um, and obviously now it's registering but it's still low so it's six and a half quarts uh, it registers on the dipstick but it's still not enough uh, at this point to get any more fluid into the transmission case you have to do it at least I did you have to do it while the truck is running uh, which is difficult like I said with that catalytic converter um, it's heating up the longer you run the truck so the truck off I kinda get the tube in place uh, fire up the truck and then I go under there and um, I pump more fluid in and again I put right at seven and a half quarts in like everybody else um, and then I pulled the uh, the fill tube out put check the little dipstick um, and it was right at the kind of the cool mark uh, and the the hash marks there on the dipstick so I really feel like seven and a half quarts um, is what I needed I don't know why I only got a little less than six quarts out um, but it is what it is so <clears throat> I'm gonna drive the truck make sure everything is uh, kosher make sure it's shifting good that sort of thing um, should you accidentally put too much fluid in um, you can get one of those little you know the little handheld suction guns and you could run the tube in there and you could suck a little bit of the fluid back out um, if you felt like you got a little too much into the case um, so that'd be one way to fix it. I will say, I don't know if you could see it in the video, I was catching the transmission fluid in this. Um, this is a little bit larger than the bottom of the, uh, the transmission pan, so as you start dropping it, uh, this worked out really well to catch all of the fluid that starts dropping around it. And you can get these, I think I get it at Harbor Freight, um, but they're only a few dollars. It's just made of plastic. Um, but I use that thing for, for all sorts of stuff. Um, so I highly recommend that. It works a little better than like the round um, oil catch pans. Um, that, that, that worked out really well. I was really happy with that. Um, the other uh, pointer I'll, I'll give you, even with the truck level, the back of the transmission pan sits a little lower. Um, <clears throat> so if you remember when we were going to drain the fluid out, we leave a couple of the bolts in and then you let the pan tilt um, <clears throat> and then all the fluid runs out because the um, <clears throat> I was going to try to tip the front and have it come out the front <clears throat> so it didn't pour all over that exhaust cross member um, that, didn't, that didn't work out very well because the, the back's already lower so even when you drop the front a bit it just kind of levels it out uh, so really you got to let the fluid pour out of the back of the transmission pan so leave two bolts or so in the front of the pan and then let it tip to the back um, it'll run all over that exhaust cross member if you have a V8 um, but it just is what it is you can clean that up later um, so you want to let it drain from the back and that's just the lowest point so that works out a little bit better um, other than that it's um, it's not a hard project uh, it makes a big mess um, I've got all my stuff cleaned up now but um, it just takes a little bit of time the first time you do it I don't know, I, I screwed around with it trying to check and get the fluid level right. Um, but knowing what I know now would go a lot a lot faster. But either way, uh, if this is the first time you've done it, um, I'd probably book out the afternoon. Don't try to rush and get it done in an hour. Um, it's just probably not going to work out um, that smoothly. It never does the first time. So Anyway, I hope this helps. Um, I'd be curious to know if anybody else does this. How many quarts did you get out of the transmission uh, when you dropped the pan? Um, and then make a note of what year your truck is. Mine's a 2010 uh, with the 5.4, but it's still the 6R80. Um, I'd just be curious what other people got out of the, the transmission. Uh, I read on one of the forums, another guy had a similar uh, scenario. He didn't get the 7.5 quarts out, um, but I never saw an answer uh, what he did. You know, some of those threads just kind of die. 
Um, so I'll be curious if you guys do it, um, what you got out. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I hope this helped. Uh, if you have any questions, hit me up. Uh, I'm always happy to help uh, any way that I can. Um, if you don't mind, hit like and subscribe. I hate to beg for that, but it, it really does mean a lot to me. I appreciate it. And uh, thanks for watching Scruff's Garage. We'll see you next time.